Okay, this is a video for uh, worlds and surface finish quiz. So we'll refer to the student notes uh, when we need to. There are a couple of questions at the beginning here, which are kind of more like general drawing questions. Uh, what do these details mean here in um, A and B? Why have that? Why is it sort of cut funny like that? That that sort of cut where it's like a zigzag line. What that means is it continues from there. So we don't want to draw the whole thing on the page, or it's going to take too much of the drawing up, or it might go off a sheet. So we just say, yeah, whatever. It's going to keep going. Let's just cut it off. Now, when we're doing a shaft, we do with this two arcs method um, because it's representing that it's a circle. Uh, but if it's flat, we use a zigzag. So it basically just means it's continuing the way it is. It continues um, off, off the uh, drawing. Another thing that we do in drawings is we show a detail view. That's a zoom up of a certain part of it. Now, quite often in detail view, they will show like a little circle around this area. And then in the detail, they have the circle zoomed up. Makes it a lot easier to read because you can say, oh, that circle belongs to this circle. But, um, and the circle will have a letter on it, so I might say A, and then this will say detail A. It's important that the detail is scaled, so obviously you're not going to do the same scale, because if it's the same scale, you could have drawn it on here anyway. We can't fit the dimensions in, that's the reason we do a detail drawing, most often. There's some small feature in the drawing uh, that we can't really show properly. Or if you want to try and show it properly, we'd have to scale the whole drawing up, which would be too big. So we're just zooming up on one spot in the drawing, usually to show the dimensions. In this case, we're trying to get those dimensions there at the end of the thread, uh, like what's their diameter and how long is it, etc. Um, there's a repeated dimension there, about 30 and that 30, which you don't normally do. All right, now welded joints. Just jump into the student notes here. This is all. Um, explained right here at the beginning of the welded notes. We've got um, the toe, the leg, the root penetration, blah, blah, blah. So the idea of a weld <coughs> is that it joins this piece of metal to this piece of metal. Right, that's, the, that's the job of a weld. But w when a welder does a weld, he has to make sure that the weld uh, gets down to that bottom corner because you don't want just something bridging across the top and having this big gap underneath. That's a bad weld. What we call, call that is that we say there hasn't any penetration, hasn't penetrated into the parent metal. So how much penetration we get is actually how far the weld goes past that corner. Because if it's melting the original metal, then that's part of the weld now. And so we call that the root. The root is the bottom corner. So root penetration is how far into the bottom corner does the weld go. Now we can't really know that for sure, unless we cut it in half and have a look. But um, there are some ways of uh, measuring that, <clears throat> like with uh, ultrasound and whatnot. So the weld itself is this triangle. Well, it's meant to be this triangle. Of course, you're not going to get a perfect triangle. It tends to be um, slightly dome-shaped, usually, or some of it can be concave as well. Uh, but generally, we're trying to head towards a triangular shape. The leg of the weld is the distance that it goes away from the corner. That's the leg of the weld. And that's normally what we use uh, when we specify the weld size. How big is the weld is the leg of the weld. How far from that corner to the edge of the weld. The toe of the weld is the edge of the weld. Effective throat thickness is now. It's an important one for um, how are we going to uh, um, investigate how strong this weld is. Now, the, the bigger the throat, then the more the force can go through the weld into the other piece. So the effective throat thickness is around about the leg length divided by root 2, or 0.7. So 70% of the leg length is the throat, throat thickness, effective throat thickness. <clears throat> um, and that bulge in the weld's um, reinforcement, that, we're not going to count that in effective throat because the force has to go past this corner here. So we're not going to count that extra bit going up there. All right, now the same applies to, that's a fillet weld. The same applies to a straight weld, which we call a butt weld. So that's fillet weld, that's butt weld. This on the right hand side. Left is fillet, right is butt. All right, toe is the edge of the weld. Um, effective throat thickness is the thickness of the weld. In this case, it's the thickness of the plate because the weld goes all the way through. Uh, reinforcement is uh, any 
any amount that it extends past or higher than the surface and um, uh, that's about it I think we don't have the leg length because um, we're not measuring from a corner oh and bottom reinforcement we've got extra uh, weld down bottom now in order for a butt weld to look like that it goes all the way through you would, if, and the plates were thick, you would need to prepare the plate and you make a triangular cut in the plates so that when they come up, the weld will fill up that triangle a little bit like a fillet weld. Um, because if you don't, uh, you won't get the weld to go all the way to the bottom. Now, when we're doing weld and drawing, we don't want to draw all these details about the weld, so we simplify it. And uh, we don't even show the weld in the drawing, we just point with a little dimension and say uh, this is a weld on this side. So there's a few rules about the uh, weld symbols. Right, the first the first thing to note is whether the symbol is above or below. So the triangle symbol is a fillet weld, and if you have a fillet weld on um, triangle underneath the line, that means it's on this side where the arrow's pointing. If it was on the top of the line, it would mean it's on the other side, which is a bit strange. Why wouldn't you just point the other side? However, if you want to show that you want to weld on both sides, you put the triangle underneath and on top. So you've got this double triangle. That means weld this side and weld on the opposite side. Opposite side is the top. Same side is the bottom. So I just want to pick that one up first before we go into this, because otherwise you may not understand what these are saying. All right. So the, the three main types of welds is fillet welds, bead welds, and surfacing, which is another type, style of welding. So a fillet weld uh, is probably the most common because we're often building uh, boxes and beams and things. So uh, a fillet weld is a triangle, and as I said, uh, if the fillet weld is on the same side as the arrow, then the triangle goes down under the, under the line. If, it, if the fillet weld was on the opposite side, the triangle would be on the top. A bead is like a butt weld, although it's not a prepared um, plate, so the bead's sitting on top, and that's shown here as a little arc. And then surfacing is when something, perhaps something's wearing out, like a uh, excavator bucket or something, you want to pack it up with some metal again, and you just run weld beads across the surface uh, beside each other and that builds up the material uh, so that's a surfacing <clears throat> all right so let's have a look at the different types of welds you see uh, fairly commonly used and what would this symbol look like for the weld? so this is the table that you'll be referring to uh, as you're going through the quiz this table illustrates what the world looks like in a picture and what the world would look like in a drawing, an engineering drawing. Some of these um, you won't see very often, they're um, just being put in there for completeness. <clears throat> a full penetration butt weld, whichever way you want to do it. Now this is really saying that we're not specifying exactly how you do it, we just want to make sure the weld goes all the way through the plate. We don't want just to weld them on top of the top corner. All right, now there could be a bunch of ways to do that. You could do it with a single V butt, for example, like this one, the third one down, or a U butt, depends how thick the plate is. Um, and who else could we do it? Yeah, so, but uh, we have, haven't decided how to do it. Let, let someone else sort that out. A square butt is basically saying um, the plates are not prepared. They're just flat at the beginning and you put enough weld in there or the plates are thin enough that the uh, weld just uh, consumes the whole area. A single V butt, uh, which is the first one we saw up here, that's the same as this one. That's a V butt. And uh, there's the uh, arrow now. It's not the triangle that you see in a fillet. A fillet has a, a triangle shape. This is a different sort of triangle. It's a shape like that, like a V. And uh, once again, the V is on this side, so this means the upside of the V is the, where the arrow is, because the symbols underneath means equals the arrow. I don't know why they made underneath the arrow. You'd think the top made more sense. Yeah. Single bevel butt. All right, so now this looks awfully much like a fillet weld, doesn't it? 
but it's called a butt weld. And that's because the penetration of the weld is actually in the plate. So the plate is continuing just as it, you would if it was a butt weld. So we're not really making a triangular weld uh, plate to plate. We're actually just making a prepared triangular butt weld to the plate. So that's why we end up with this butt weld symbol again. <clears throat> Single U butt, sometimes a U shape is easy, uh, better to work with when you're welding plates. Uh, it tends to only happen on a big plate though. And J is the U shape on one side just like single V is a V shape on one side. Okay, uh, flush weld is, um, just to, when you say flush, this is extension of a symbol we've already seen. So when you say flush, what you're saying is the top surface should be flat rather than bulging out. And then you might just grind it off and, but, uh, to make it flat, but and that's the intention of the weld. Uh, so in this case, we've got a V weld so this is the prepared V-well, just like we have there. Um, but we're told that it's flush on the top. Or it could be convex on the top, which means we've got the arc up, upwards. Or it could be concave. Now, this is, a, this is a fillet well because the weld is between the two plates, not the end of the plate. So this fillet well is, has a fillet triangle, and it's concave, which means it's inwards arc, so it's called rounded appearance. Okay. Look. All right, so um, here we just we, we did meant look at this one earlier. This is explaining how the symbol is, is actually um, constructed. So that represents a fillet. That's plate one, plate two, and here's the weld. So that's how you think about it. think of it. The arrow is uh, pointing to the face. If it's underneath, the weld is on the side of the arrow. Uh, there are a couple of other extra things as well. A little flag on the symbol means this is going to be done on site. So normally we weld things up in the factory and then we take them out and erect them, for example. Let's say they're beams for a building, construction. Um, but there might be parts there that we can't do uh, in, in the building. We need to have the two parts joined together and then weld. Or we need to line it up or something before we weld. So. In that case, uh, we want this one welded on site. So they've got a little flag on them, so you spot all the ones that to be welded on site. Another symbol is weld all around. Now, we did say you can have weld both sides, but if you're talking about like a tube or a circle, I mean, it's not just both sides, it's for the edges as well. So oh, for a circle, obviously, it's around, around in the circumference. So we just have this circle symbol at the elbow of the arrow. It means weld all around. And so obviously if you have both of those symbols, it means well all around and do it on side. Alright, so this is how it might look. Uh, we've got a fillet well with both sides of um, this plate intersecting that plate. So here's one way we could do it. Symbol, symbol, arrow to there. That's one way we could do it. Um, and we could draw it whichever way, uh, whichever we want. I, I think this view would be the best one to put on. You'd, you're not going to put three lots of world symbols on. You don't duplicate dimensions, and you don't duplicate world symbols. You don't tell them do a fillet world, and then in another in another view, tell them to do a fillet world. I think what you're doing for them, or what is going on. <clears throat> so uh, we're just showing different ways. So each so note this uh, instruction up here. Each symbol should only be used once on a real drawing. So you'll only have one of these, not one, two, three of them. Likewise here, you can either put it in this view or you can put it in this view, but you don't do it twice. Okay, this is weld all around. We just get one continuous bead. Now, quite often welds are done all around because it helps uh, to seal it so the water can get in. Um, and once again, this is weld both sides. This one you need two symbols because you, you weld both sides means that side and that side, but then you haven't dealt with the end. And if you did weld all round, you put a weld on this side underneath that bar, which you don't want in this drawing. So we really don't want three. One, two, three. So we could do weld both sides of one of them, and then we need another symbol to show the end one. So there should be two symbols in this drawing. 
and um, well both sides so we've got one there and one there holding this piece of angle onto that one so you can just point to one of those sides well both sides means that side and that side good all right let's have a go at the quiz so here we are matching letters uh what's letter c that's the amount of extra that we had on it. and this is coming directly from the uh the notes here Oops, let me get so these these are the uh this should help so we want that that's the reinforcement here let's see is how much reinforcement have we got on the on the world see that so just keep um, referring back to these diagrams here that explains uh, what's going on there with those parts d is the root penetration etc all right and the same with uh, question four you're just getting those straight off the uh, explanation here same sort of thing it's pretty much the same same drawing anyway. All right, and this one is uh, getting the right symbol beside the world. So they come all out of these ones here, symbol tables. So follow the symbol tables here uh, to, to work out which one's which. So, for example, that fillet world matches that drawing there. So we just need something that looks like that, which I think is this one here. So just grab that symbol and drag it up into there. When it clicks in place, that's now in place. Yep. Let's Yeah, so it's really good. So I uh, just drag those images into there according to those uh, drawings that you see in the notes. There's a continuation of the same thing here. Weld on site. There's a weld on site symbol. That little flag. Weld all around. That's the circle. Weld both sides. It's got one up and one down. They're pretty easy. Convex. Got the outwards arrow. Concave's got the inwards arrow. And flat. It's got the straight lines. Check that one. That one's pretty easy. Oh, yeah, we thought that right. Question six. Question seven. Okay, here's an actual drawing from a uh, <clears throat> from an engineering drawing of these of a uh, support post for this uh, armor guard rail on a, looks like it's on a bridge. So. Um, they're making sure that um, the plate on the bottom, which is uh, bolted to the concrete, um, stays on that piece of steel. And it has to be good enough. If a vehicle crashes into it, it's got to support um, that as well. So uh, we, that's why they're being um, quite um, fussy about making sure this is done properly. So they've told you exactly how this should be done in the world. So this symbol is uh it's got a fair bit to it isn't it so what's the circle mean all round and what's this v here v means that your v preparation so we're preparing the world before you do it now you can also on the drawing have uh, instructions as well so it says world preparation refer detail three now detail three is on the drawing somewhere else in this box so there's a drawing with this in it, and then if you go somewhere else on the drawing on the page or another sheet, uh, there's detail three which you had to look and find, and this shows you how the preparation should be done. So this top, the tube at the top, has to have a 45 degree cut on it, so that when you weld, you can get a good attachment of the weld to the uh, to the to the metal, the six mil thick metal. And making sure that this um, this um, square tube is uh, properly attached and they're even making sure there's a gap at the bottom that doesn't touch because that way the wheel goes through there and you get a good connection you don't leave a little hole at the end of the metal so uh, you can put a note <coughs> on a wheel and symbol as well all right so there's a few uh, extra things in there now the number next to the world means the size of the leg of the world for example if you had six next to a fillet world symbol the six means the size of the world along the leg of the world that is from the corner to the toe of the world is six mil roughly 
Well, a minimum really it should be. The lab would be less than six mil. So eight mil would be that this weld is eight millimeters from the rig of the world. All right, so I've got a bunch of questions there about what type of world, etc. So um, which uh, which of these statements are correct? The thickness of the SHS, now that stands for square hollow section. So it's a hollow tube and it's square. <coughs> uh, is six mil thick? Well, there's a six mil there. It looks like it is. So that's correct. It's a but well, this world size is six. Is the size of the world six? You might see, is it going all the way around? Okay, so uh, you can answer those off there. Here's a manufactured part. Question eight. Um, fabricated out of plate and welded and has shows shows those welders symbols um, with the sizes and that they're nearly all fillet welds and there's a few little um, notes there to go along with it okay what are the size of the welds well most of them are six mil but we also have this one here is only a three mil that's probably thinner uh, material there and they don't want the six mil weld on it so it looks like these plates are thicker and then these ones are thinner for A, parts A. Uh, what's the size of weld A in millimetres? Um, which welds are fillet welds? So you're going to be talking you know, A, B, C, da, da, da. Uh, which is an all round weld? We're looking for that little circle symbol. Probably an easier question than the previous one. Question nine we're now switching over to surface finish. Alright, let's just go back into the notes here and have a quick dive into surface finish. What does surface finish mean? Surface finish is the roughness of the surface of the part measured as an average. And uh, they, they do a lot of mathematical average, take the square of it and the square root of it, jazz. And it's measured in microns, which is one thousandth of a millimetre, which is about the limit of accuracy of machining you can't really do much better than a micron <clears throat> uh, which is ridiculously uh, impossible really for a large part because uh, a little bit of temperature change would do a couple of microns okay now here's some rough numbers gives you a bit of a feel for surface roughness values so uh, sort of good machining is around 1.6 to 3.2 so 3.2 is like your typical machine surface um, just straight off the machine. Uh, if you're trying to get really nice surface finish, maybe you could do it uh, on the lathe, um, fine machining, about 0.8. By, by the time you're trying to get uh, much under one micron, you're really looking at grinding or even polishing methods. So you get some very fine uh, mirror-like finishes now down at 0.05, 0.025. Going the other way, um, if you're going rougher coarse machining where you can really see the tool marks now, uh, like at, if you're at 12, you'd, you'd definitely see the tool marks on the job. And now here, 25 rough casting and 50, which is like a rough oxy cut, is, uh, or maybe sand casting, is um, very rough finish. 50 microns. Now, 50 microns is a 20th of a millimetre of roughness. All right, so uh, in the surface roughness, uh, the symbol is like a little tick, not to be confused with the welding symbol, but nothing to do with the welding symbol because we put it on differently. We don't put it on an arrow to a corner. We put it on something, usually a dimension, or the surface itself, the extension line of the surface, uh, to a surface, not to a corner. That's the first thing. And the second thing is it does look a little bit different to a weld symbol because we've got one short and one long, so it's kind of a tick shape. And we may or may not have this third line here, and they're 60 degrees too, by the way, so it's like an equilateral triangle. So uh, although it looks a little bit like the welding symbol, it's not the same. All right, now here it is in practice. How would you put it on? So you'd see, we're not pointing at a corner. If you point at a corner, someone's going to think, is this a weld or what? So you point it to a face. Now, how you represent the face, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can put it on the face itself, on the edge. That's one way. Or you could put it on the extension line. This one down here shows on the extension line. So, um, let me just copy this. 
All right, so this one here, that's just drawn straight on the surface there. Like that, that's valid, you're allowed to do that. This one is touching or, or drawing an arrow to an extension line. These are called extension lines because they're extending from the part to the dimension. So yes, you can use the extension line. The extension line is considered an extension of that surface. So that's another way to do it, that's fine. Uh, here, we, because uh, it's upright, we have to use an arrow, otherwise it's going to be drawn in here, which you don't want to do. That's a bad idea. So this is no good. Can't do that. Uh, and you don't put the symbol upside down either. That's wrong. Or on an angle. See, upside down is no good. Get rid of all the upside downs. You try not to have it inside the material, because the surface finishes on this side, not the material side. That doesn't make sense. So yes, you can do the surface finish on the inside of the hole that will work um, or on the on the extension line that's fine um, this would should have really been on an arrow I, would have done, I wouldn't do that I would actually do it right now it's a bit of a question on that one um, yeah, this is okay what else have we done wrong here we've got a on an angle again, we don't know what sort of symbol that is. A symbol is meant to look like that, not like that, or upside down. No, they're no good. It will confuse everybody. All right, so there are um, some basic rules about uh, how the surface finish line uh, symbol should look. Some numbers here about surface finish um, for different processes. Now we saw some um, very approximate ones here. This one's being a bit more specific to the process itself. So here's a whole bunch of different sorts of processes and what their surface finish range is like. So we're sawing is very rough. So we're going from the really rough type lines and then we're getting better and better and better quality. So um, milling, turning, milling and turning. There's your classic machining operations there. And um, I don't know why drilling would be. Oh no, it's not a better surface finish. The so turning has got a surface finish right down to point 0.1, whereas drilling is only going to point 0.8. So turning is better surface finish than drilling. Makes sense. Reaming's got a better surface finish than drilling. That makes sense. And then grinding, we're getting right up to the point 0.025, which is uh, quite quite high. That's a pretty good surface finish from 0.025. And then polishing, super finishing, etc better and better and looking at the casting ones as well so the um, the casting sand casting very rough and then right up to die casting which isn't too bad die casting is getting us up to about 0.4 it's not a bad finish and um, cold rolling can get even better so cold rolling is um, one of the best and uh, barrel finishing which is um, getting us right up near the super finishing all right and here's another table so this is a third table listing service finishes so there's different ways of showing them this one's kind of giving you a bit of an explanation of um, each one of those you, know, you would call 1.6 a good machine finish or 0.8 a high grade machine finish etc now you don't want to specify on a drawing that you want high quality finished by cylindrical grinding on something that doesn't really matter very much and you could have got away with just an ordinary commercial finish because if you're asking for a higher surface finish than necessary it's going to cost more money because they have to do you know get it into special um, operations to get that done all right so that's um, pretty much all we're doing there with surface finish so it's just really a gauge for how smooth the surface should be that you're um, that you've got on the drawing all right so surface roughness is measured in all right so the units for surface roughness roughness is microns one thousandth of a millimeter the micron is closer to now if we're converting a micron to inches all right so we have 25 millimeters in an inch so it's one thousandth of a millimeter which is one thousandth times 25 so it's 25 thousandths of an inch but a micro inch is a millionth of an inch. So how many microns in a micro inch? 
That's interesting one. So a millionth of an inch versus a thousandth of a millimeter. Get your calculator out for that one. And a thou is a thousandth of an inch. And how many microns are in thousandths of an inch? Alright. Uh, here's, here's another table similar to the one in the notes there and um, best by laser cutting we've got a few others in here as well uh, some extra abrasion ones like electro polishing and um, some other ones like laser cutting and electron beam cutting blah 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 EDM which is um, electro discharge machining which they're doing uh, a lot of tool making all right, so you just uh, find out which which is the best surface finish or different different methods. Just follow that table. <clears throat> a little bit like the welding symbol, we have welding symbol. Uh, this time we have tolerance surface tolerance symbol modifiers, and uh, there's only three. A bit like the welding symbol, yet weld all around, and weld both sides, etc. Well, this one is surface finish by any method is just the tick. Surface finish by machining, really, this means, because it says material removal required, so it's machining, including grinding. Uh, you put the line across. So that's a machined surface. This is whatever. However you can do it, we don't care. Like, for example, this might come straight off an injection, uh, a uh, die cast job. So straight from the casting, it might be fine, and you can just leave it. Or it might come from the casting and need to machine it. That would have a symbol like this. And this one with a circle on it says you're not allowed to touch the surface. That would be more like a forging or something. We don't want you to machine it. Just leave it. You're not allowed to touch it. And you've got to try and get the surface finished without machining, basically. There's that table again. We're talking about um, the surface finish here in metric or in inches. We use metric because this is a metric chart. Uh, so it'll be the pink ones and which one should be used for um, a sliding dynamic ceiling face of a hydraulic actuator all right so it's a dynamic ceiling face hmm, that looks like the first row the surface finish should be between 0.1 and 0 0.4 0.1 to 0.4 so we need something that in the black area is 0.1 not up in the grey, you know, the very best thing you can get, but in the black area. Alright, so which one of these should we say in the black area, that is in the common range? Normally, can we get 0.1 to 0.4? So 0.1 to 0.4, so it's these, this area here, it's a bit black, there's a few there in the abrasion ones, there's one in this roller burnishing. Looks like it's going to be some of these polishing, lapping, honing, electric, da da da. See what you got. And now we're reading some drawings, nearly done. Uh, match the following surface finish of the. Just be careful that uh, we've already mentioned about surface finish and you put them on the face like you can here. Right, that means it's this face here. Or you can put it on the extension line, which you haven't done in this drawing, but um, that would also represent. Another thing they've done in this drawing, which we will get up to in the next uh, quiz, is that they've specified something from a surface. So this little symbol here means datum. So we're going to call this surface A. That's what that means. So the black triangle means call this surface, which is uh, diameter 40, call this surface A. And then when I'm referring to this bit here, which is 50 millimetres, it's saying make sure that this 50 mil diameter is lined up with this 40 mil diameter on the other side. So we don't want this wobbling. We don't want to fit this onto the shaft and then this thing's wobbling. It's got to be nice and accurate between that face, that cylinder, and that cylinder that should line up within 0.05. That's a geometric tolerance anyway. So um, surface finish wise, let's go through the question. Surface finish of the 50 mil diameter shaft section. So that is this one. So what's the surface finish of this one? There it is at the top, 0.4. 30 mil diameter bore, where's the 30 mil? This is this one in here. And that's a very accurate 1.6, etc. 
All right, question 16, another component. It's got a detailed view on it. So uh, underneath the cap of this, this looks like some sort of hydraulic seal or something goes in there, maybe an O-ring. And um, then you lock it off to um, seal it up. So the O-ring fits in here. So it's very important that this area is well made and has a good surface finish so that the O-ring seals properly, sits in there and seals properly. So we have some surface finish in here against that face. So what is the required surface finish for sealing area against the elastomeric rubbery seal? So the surface finish symbol here, we have 2.5 on that face. And on this one, which is along that face, it's also 2.5. So it turns out that this is the surface that the O-ring is going to be sealing and the specification is 2.5. It's the only, it's the only surface finish symbol in the drawing anyway, so it's not like you get that one wrong. And that's the end. There's a couple of other things going on there. There's a, a geometric tolerance um, between... With W, I don't know where W is. It's probably parts of the drawing that aren't there. <clears throat> All right, that's it for the welds and service finish quiz.